Okay, so today we're going to do a black canvas floral type painting. And I love doing these because they're so easy and, you know, it's really low maintenance as a starting point. So once we have our canvas painted black and it's all dry, we're going to start putting in some greenery. Now the greenery is going to be simply just using green. I'm going to mix my yellow, my primary yellow, and my primary blue which is all I'm ever using, just using the Liquitex Basics in primary colors, plus white and then black. And that's, that's all I'm using here. And what I want to do is create just like a medium kind of green color, but it, you always have to have a little bit of white mixed in when you're working on the black canvas, okay? So what, once I have that, I'm going to go ahead and add some stems by just taking the edge of the brush and pulling up. Using the edge, I'm using my filbert. I just like using this for these small canvas. So I'm gonna go ahead and do some that are tall, some that are small. Gently using the edge. Starting with just this one shade of green. We're gonna do a few shades as per usual. They can kind of cross over each other. And notice how I'm just letting it be really loose. But I want some to be really tall, so I'm going to have some going, going like really close, really high up on the sides. Especially, and then maybe a couple going up high and towards the middle, but maybe not as much. And I just want a lot. I just want to imagine that this is like a grassy field it's just so crazy. <laughs> so just do as many lines as you can. And then you can change your color a little bit. So I would recommend using maybe a little more blue and green and maybe a little less white to make it a little darker and heavier on the blue, especially, to change it just a little bit. So you notice how this is like a little lighter. And then I can add a little more blue and yellow, make it darker. And then I can layer that in. And then I can do the opposite, so I can make it lighter, more yellow and white, less blue and yellow, and make a lighter shade. Oh no, I'm going way lighter. You want to have at least three shades of green for the stems. These can layer over what you already have, and they can stand alone. You can pull down from the top down or up, like however you want to do it, really. I do a combination. And if you don't like working with the filbert, you can always test out using a square brush or something like that, or even just a small round brush. So do not feel limited by what I'm choosing to paint with right now. Sometimes I do I just sort of grab whatever brush is in front of me and just go with it. You can even use an angle. Just use the edge of it. So it, it doesn't matter that much. But I do want to switch to a round brush for when we want to add some maybe some leaves. So for the lines, you can just go with 
you know, any brush that has an edge on it, whatever you're more comfortable with. But when you want to add some petals, um, grab a square, a round brush, and it can be any size. Just if you want bigger leaves, use a, choose a bigger one. If you want smaller leaves, choose a smaller one because we're going to do a one brush stroke. But what I'm going to do is just use any of my shades of green. Doesn't matter. I'm using number four round. And then I'm going to go in on my grass and just add some stuff that looks more like leaves. So I basically just take point the brush where I want the tip of the petal or the, the leaf barely touch so that it's really small and then push down as you come towards the stem. And then that will give you a nice leaf. OK, so just I continue to do that wherever I want to see a leaf. Different shades, try to do a few different shades. Lighter and darker. You remember more yellow and white for a lighter shade, more blue for a darker shade. So you can really make some small ones some big ones. You can stack them. So sometimes I'll just put a bunch in a row to create almost like a little pattern. You can do it even on both sides. That looks really pretty sometimes. You can change your ratios of paints. Like I can use more blue and white and less yellow for more of a turquoise color too. So maybe you just want to see a different kind of turquoisey vibe. I like doing that. I love this color in these florals. It's just one of my favorite colors to see. And I can get really, really light by using a lot of white in some spots to really pump it up and create something that looks a little different. So don't be afraid to be bold with your colors. It's only going to look fun. It's just a painting too, so don't stress. And then you can always add more stems. So if you change your mind and you're like, oh, I want more stems or I want that turquoise showing on my stem, you know, you, you can go in and, oops, I got a lot of white on that one, but it kind of looks cool. So I'm not going to worry about it too much. You can reestablish some of those stems or layer over them so that they look a little bit brighter. So sometimes when you put a layer on black canvas, and let it sit for a minute, it it gets really dull because the kind of the black paint seeps through. So sometimes you have to do a couple layers. Sometimes you don't, you know, sometimes you, you might get a lot of layers at once and it's um, it works out. But notice I can do like really small little little leaves. And then again, use those darker shades of green too. And notice I can make, if I do some really small ones, maybe they even look further away. So it gives you some depth. Do some that are a little bigger and bolder, especially up front. And you can even go over them multiple times. You can overlap. I love painting leaves. It could just pretty much do it all day, but I'm not going to do that because <laughs> then we can't, can't get onto our flowers. We want to do that. So I want to get onto the flowers. I'm still going to just use a round brush. And we're going to start by making our flower centers and petals, and then we'll layer. So this is fun. Using the round brush still, I'm just cleaning it off and drying it. Really good. And then I'm going to go in and utilize some flowery kind of colors. So for the centers of my flowers, I might choose some yellow kind of colors and or reddish kind of colors. You know, you can kind of decide. But I usually will do the foliage in this like white, blue, yellow kind of thing. And then the flowers will be more in this white, red, yellow kind of thing or white, blue and red for purples. But I'm going to start with the, the pinks. So I'm going to use white. 
and yellow first. And I'm going to create some centers. So I'm going to go like a little dab towards the top of my stem. I'm just making some dabs. And then I want to add some red to that to create maybe some light orange or the less yellow you use and the more it's just white and red, the more it's going to move towards like a pink color. So if you don't want that yellowish kind of thing going on, just move away from it. You can either clean your brush to get completely away from it or just add more red and white um, to make sure that you're getting more of that red pinkish color. But I still want a little bit of yellow mixed into mine because that's just what I want to do. And then what I'm going to do is pull from the sides of that shape, just like I did with the leaves. And then as they pull down, I'll make my brush strokes a little bigger. And then I'm just going around like that. So see how I go to the sides on the right and left of the yellow and then go around the same thing here. And it's just like the leaf. Point the tip of the brush where you want it to go. And then move and push harder as you get to the center of the flower. And that's really fun. So now maybe I want some of my centers to be kind of orange. So I will use yellow and red with a little bit of white. And I can make some centers to my flowers that look more orangey. And they're just kind of choosing randomly. <laughs> But then I want to clean my brush. And maybe I want these flowers to actually look more like white. And maybe just a little bit of yellow. So I want it to be more like, you know, just like a white flower. But I put a little bit of yellow so it wasn't too stark. Like it, you want to have a little bit of a different shape. Like pure white we could use, but you want it to be in combination with maybe add a little hint of something to soften it so it's not too harsh. And this is the same kind of flower. We'll do some different kinds, but I, I just want to play with these for these colors. Um, you can use that yellow and white towards the top of your yellow centers. So I can add that like really yellow and white bright color towards the top so that it looks really bright at the top of my yellow centered flowers, the ones with the pink petals. And then for the ones with the orange, you can just add a little extra yellow to the brush and put like a yellow at the top of the orange. We want to create three shades in all of our colors, just like we did with the grass and the leaves. We want to do the same thing with our flowers. And we're going to do that gradually as we go. But maybe I want to add, let me see, some more orange centers. So notice how all my flowers are kind of piled up here. Maybe I want like some big ones that look like they're more down in the grass. So just to create like a pop of something. So I'm going to put one like right here. One of my orange ones. And I'm going to make my center pretty big because this flower is going to be closer than the ones that are up here. 
and I'm just going to do the same thing. So I just want to show you how you can just go back and add any of these colored flowers you want. I want to use mostly white with a little bit of yellow for the petals, just like I did with these. And then I'm going to go big. Just pushing harder and pulling my brush out further to create those petals. I'm just going painting over the green. If your green is smudging in like way too much, you can always blow dry your canvas and then proceed. So now I have this like big one right here that can be kind of focal. So you want to create something like that when you're painting. You don't want everything to be too similar in size or it gets really um, just not as interesting. You want to create one that's like super big. And notice I have some that are kind of small. So you want to make sure you're incorporating that into your design. It's just going to make it look more interesting. And then I can do some different types of flowers that are maybe purple. So cleaning the brush, I'm still using my number four round for this. And I'm going to create some purple, which is just blue and red. And of course, I'm going to be using the white as well. Next in. Now, if I have more blue in my mix, it's going to look kind of like this, like kind of grayish. But the more red I add, the more warm my purple is going to get. Notice how I added a lot more red. Okay, and then more white is going to lighten. So I want, I kind of want a warm purple to start. And then these ones, I'm just going to do more of like kind of dabbing. So say I want to do one here, I'm just going to kind of dab. Maybe it's like lavender. Just tap the top a little fuller and then come up and do softer dots as you pull up. And some of this can just be existing down in the front a little lower. And some can be kind of a little more distant in the back. So you can do wherever you want to see it. I'm just making the decisions here. <laughs> Where do I want to see it? Definitely want to see it there, here. So one, two, three, four. I'm going to do like five. I like to have an odd number, either three or five. I don't always achieve that, but I try to sometimes just think, I don't know why, just it's what I want to do. And then I'm good with that. So notice I have five of the yellow flowers and three, actually I have four of these. I might add another flower that looks kind of pink to create an odd number. And then I'm gonna start layering. So I'm gonna add one more of these colored flowers. So again, the center of that one was more of a yellow, a little bit of white. And I'm gonna put that one down here and make it big, just like I did with the yellow one to make it a little bigger. And then I want more of a pink petal, red and white. So now I have a couple of big ones. I have five of each flower. Now it's not mandatory that you do that, but it just, it's something I like to, it's just a way for me to check what I'm doing and make sure things aren't getting too sparse or whatever. And also size. Notice I have some medium sized pink ones, a small pink one and a big pink one. I have some medium sized yellow ones, a small yellow one and a big one. And same thing with the purple. I have some that are like kind of small, some that are more lower, bigger, whatever. And then now we're just going to layer. So you want to ensure that every single aspect of each element of the flowers and the stems has at least three shades, minimum three shades. So I'm going to go ahead and work on these 
white ones first, and I'm gonna add mostly, pretty much pure white. And I'm gonna go over the petals, but leave the first layer showing just a little bit. So I'm just going over the petals again. But you should still see a little bit of the first layer. Okay, so now we have that. And then with my pink flowers, I'm gonna do more red on my on my um my color here. So I want it to be a little heavier on the red. So you could go either lighter or darker, but just create a different shade than your first shade. So I'm making this red a little richer here. There's still a little bit of white. And then I'm going to go over that. But notice how you can see my first shade still. It's like there, okay? Now I wanna create, you can just do some orange here, red and yellow. And then I wanna establish a little bit of a darker shade on the underside of my orange centers, which are for the white flowers, whitish flowers. So notice how I'm just taking that orange and re kind of establishing it under the center to make it bolder. And then I could use kind of a similar, like just a darker yellow. So if I add more yellow to my orange, it's gonna get a little darker, but it's still gonna look yellowish and that can go under my red flower center. So notice how it's starting to build. I love and then in between adding different shades, you wanna let it dry a little bit. So don't go too crazy on it all at once. Now I'm gonna go ahead and do the purple. I wanna create a darker shade of purple. So I'm just using red and blue with less, maybe there's a little bit of white or none, or just a little bit. I'll do a little bit of white mixed in so it's not like too dark because it can get really dark. And then that's going to get blotted on top. I'm just doing the same thing. I'm just tapping the tip and clustering it up. But I'm not covering over my first layer all the way. So now we've got more shades coming together. Now I'm gonna clean the brush. I'm gonna go back into my little daisies and work with the colors a little bit. And I just, you could take it as far as you want, but for example, in here, what I can do is I can use a little more yellow and I can kind of pull that into the flower from the center. You can even use a little bit of that dark yellow with a little bit of red mixed in. 
but you want to create some definition and I want to create like a dark kind of color right at the base. I'm using a more red right at the base where we got that kind of dark orange right at the base of the center of the flower where it hits the petals. And you can kind of brush that out just a little bit, but be careful because we still want this flower to look relatively light, so don't go too crazy. But it's just going to create a little more depth in the shape. For my red flowers, I can use kind of a mostly red with a little bit of blue. And that's going to be able to give me some fun colors at the base of the pink flowers. So you're just kind of building and playing and then you can go back to any of your colors like I can use orange in my centers to reestablish or just brighten. Use more red to darken certain areas. And then use more yellow and white to brighten certain areas. So you really want to dance between your mid your mid tone, your highlight and your shadow. And you can even just use pure white dab towards the tops of the flowers little taps to just really make it bright at the top And you can even take your dark purple and, you know, make sure you have enough of that in your lavender, but you can also use it on your flowers, like at the base, little kind of taps right where the bottom of the center meets the petals. So this is like a good shadow on any of them. You can use this on. And I'm just tapping right where the petals meet the base of the center. Any of the any of the colors, any of the flowers you can do this with to create more shadow. Yeah, obviously we dabbed it into the lavender, but you can do it into the other ones too. And I'm not, it's just a little bit adding, you know, little by little, you want to create just so many different shades. I want to add some highlights to my lavender though. And it's going to be like my lightest shade of purple yet, which I usually like to add more red and a lot more white to create my lightest shade of lavender. So I have a lot of red, a little bit of blue and a lot of white. And then you dab that. So you should see three shades of purple. Your first shade, which is kind of a medium shade. Your second, which is maybe your shadow color. And then your third, which is your highlight or your light color. You don't want to cover up any of the three 
all the way. I mean, like you want to see all three. So sometimes people get a little carried away and then it's like, wait, where's your shadow? You like totally lost it. So be careful not to do that because then it'll just look weird. And then you can just do another round of highlights. So usually I'll just dance between shadows and highlights. Um, just using the white, you can go in and add more to the tops of the flowers, to the whitish petals. Um, you can even add some white dots to the lavender for a little bit of a kick of like super bright highlight. So three is the minimum for your shades, but you can go beyond that. It doesn't have to be minimum, you know, that doesn't have to only be three. It can be more than three. That's just your minimum. And then sometimes I like to have like little dots floating up from the flowers into the background. So you can just poke and let, let some dots kind of float up. That's optional. I like doing it. Well, maybe I add like another shade of pink to my flowers, just red and white to these ones, maybe a little extra white to make them a little lighter. And you can be so loose with it. I mean, you can try to make it look more like perfect and realistic. And I know some people do, and that's totally fine. But as long as your shades are showing and you, you kind of are doing what feels fun for you, you're going to have a style and it's going to look cool. So I just usually want people to rather focus on that rather than any kind of perfectionism or any kind of, you know, that kind of thing. Because that's, it's not the point of, of art. It is just about having fun. And then you can also come in, like maybe I want to use some just more like blue and white, like or that turquoisey kind of color, where it's just mostly blue and white. <laughs> and then you can add some like little patterns to your leaves, like little lines. Sometimes I'll do that in the end. Like add some more layers to some of the leaves, like some highlights or just some more lines or interesting kind of shapes. So just make sure you have all that in there. Make sure things don't look too flat. And the best way to do that is to check your shades and then layer. But you do have to get to a letting go point. <laughs> I know that's hard to do too, <laughs> for, especially for me. I'm like the worst. I have a hard time letting things go, especially when you want to just keep, oh, like maybe you can add a little more of this, a little more of that, and it, it just can go on forever. But it is good to find a point where you're like, you know what, I don't really know what I'm doing anymore and maybe I'm overdoing it and then cut yourself off and call it done. So I'm gonna get, I'm gonna be at that point now. Just a really simple little flower kind of thing that you can do. And you can do this with the old canvas painted black, or you can paint a canvas black and do this. You can even paint a different background and do something similar. So hopefully you had fun. Don't forget to like and subscribe. It helps the channel grow. And I put a lot of content out there to, in the hopes to just people who don't have access to any kind of art instruction might have some guidance and some inspiration. And hopefully that was what I was able to provide for you today. Thank you so much for tuning in and I hope to paint with you again soon. Bye.